Hello everyone, long time no see. I'm glad to be back. This is Latte Punch. I'm going to read what I was going to read for Valentine's Day, since that's how long ago I it is since I've recorded anything. It's a love story by for Ditsy Doo and people who are fans of the Doctor Who called Kiss by Wire by Bachelor Levillain. It's Ditsy Doo's birthday party today, but there's something terribly, horribly wrong. Why won't the phone stop ringing? Written for the October 2014 write off, just over the horizon. Chapter 1 Kiss by Wire. The phone wasn't supposed to ring. Ditsy distinctly remembered the stallion saying so. Back a few months ago, when all the busy looking ponies came in to install Ponyville's own very first telephone switchboard here in the post office. Yes, she was sure of it now. She remembered seeing the phone in question being wired into her desk and nervously telling the handy pony that she wasn't a switchboard operator. She had a big, puffy beard and was really, really patient and nice, something that Ditsy would always appreciate a lot. When she had asked, he tapped at his clipboard and told her that this phone, with its extra long cable and its complicated looking wires, was something called a auxiliary line and that her desk in the middle of the room was the very best place for it. He explained how every pony could send calls from it if the main switchboard broke. Also, that it wouldn't ring. In fact, it shouldn't receive calls at all. He had made sure he was very clear about that. A girl had to have a healthy fear of unexpected responsibilities after all, right? And now, despite it all, the blasted thing had the audacity to ring, sitting muffled underneath three months' worth of papery office litter. It had began moments after Ditsy sat down at her desk for her early morning shift, as if the darned contraption had been waiting for her. This was not the kind of start Ditsy would have chosen for her birthday. Everyone knows that from sunup to sundown, a pony's birthday is a near-sacred thing. Old nags like to say how any kind of misfortune during the day made for abysmal luck for the rest of the year. Ditsy wasn't a very superstitious mare, but with just a few minutes before sunrise, things weren't looking good. The only other pony clocked in this early was the office front desk secretary. It kind of made it all worse. There was just Ditsy and Miss Neatly sitting at their own desk in a big, empty room with an incessantly ringing phone in the middle of it. The pre-dawn light striking from the low angle through the window actually made the bags under Miss Neely's eyes look deeper and darker. She looked terrifyingly cross. After making a little show of pretending to notice the phone, pointing at it and giving a few shrugs that said, Oh, this thing? Ditsy awkwardly picked up the receiver, all the while withering under the, her co-worker's demonic pre-coffee glare. Hello, this is Ditsy Doo, she said. H how can I help you this morning? She quickly added, imitating the way she had seen the switchboard mayor answer calls. Ditsy, is that... Oh, well, it is, isn't it? Came a stallion's voice. Rushed and bumbling. Goodness, I've gone and messed it all up already. But, but that's all right. I'm a I'm secret admirer of yours. And I, well, I noticed it was your birthday today. Dizzy squinted and pressed the receiver up against her ear harder. That voice of his. Pine Turner? Is that, is that you? What? What? Oh, no, 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 no. Of course not. I've never heard of. I'm a secret admirer, the intention being that you definitely for certain have never ever heard of me. Rolling her eyes, she replied, We've been friends since forever. I think I could recognize your voice. Though I didn't know you were, um, admired me. A tinge of warmth spread across her cheeks at the thought. I, uh, ha, I guess I do, but I really don't know who this Pine Turner fellow is, the stallion lied. Definitely sounds like a nice so sort of guy, if I should ever er, meet him. 
Ditsy glanced around the office. There was a strange sort of echo in the call. She didn't know if this was a normal or not on the phone. Draining, she could almost imagine it coming from the window next to Miss Neatly's desk. Turner, I think it's super sweet that you remember today, she said, picking up the receiver and walking to the window. The extra long cord trailed behind her. But I really have to know, how in Equestria did you call this phone? It isn't supposed to be hooked up to anything. Er, well, secret admirers have good secrets, you know. That's the appeal of us. We're all mysterious and, um, attractive that way, you know. The blush in his cheeks was perfectly audible. Mm-hmm, she said. The echo is definitely clearer here. Ditsy smiled. Half listening to Turner's babbles, she trotted to the office entrance. The trailing wire from her phone swept around, knocking this and that off Miss Lee's desk. Ditsy suddenly mouthed out desperate apologies. Tomorrow she would definitely need a double batch of Miss Neatly's favorite banana muffins to make up for this. As Dizzy stepped out of the building and turned toward its outer east wall, her phone ran out of cord. She let it drop. It was easy to hear Turner from here, anyway. There he sat, next to the little blue box of a shed that had all of the circuits and wires for the building's switchboard. A mess of knotted cord ran from the phone into his two into a tangled heap of wires that must have fallen from its rack in the shed. Turner's free fore hoop was circling through his mane, like a running runner doing laps at a track. A nervous tick that gave his hair a perpetually messy look. He was still babbling on in that way of his Noticing neither Ditsy approaching nor the increasingly alarming state of his short, ruffled mane. His hooves shook with an anxiousness that put bubbly giggles in Ditsy's throat as he tried to salvage the conversation he thought he was still having. It was at that moment that Celestia's son decided to finally peek from between the faraway hills. Deep orange sunlight wove its way through the spring green leaves on the trees in the yard and warned Ditsy's face. Just on time, thought Ditsy Do, with a grin, walking briskly forward with a confident sway in her hips. She decided that her first present today would be a kiss. The end. That was a cute little story. Uh, I'm sorry I've been gone for so long and all that. It's, I had little technical issues. But uh, I think I'm back. We're good now. And if not, I have a backup uh, headphone thing I bought. Um, see if that works or not. So, give me suggestions, like, subscribe, etc. And see you guys next week.